Okay, in the last video, we derived the relation for the effective potential, which is given here. This potential has two part. One is the actual uh, potential from actual force, and the other is the potential from the false force, uh, sort of force. And the shape of the potential is given here, which is drawn in this figure. Now, suppose we have a particle which is energy E1, uh, E1 coming from infinite distance, like on this side we have infinite distance. This is this distance, this side will represent the distance r and this side will represent the effective potential now we are not specifying the zero energy level because we didn't consider the zero energy level but we consider two energy level one is e1 and one is e2 and we suppose that a particle coming from infinity towards this force field somewhere we have another let's suppose a particle somewhere here now that particle has a potential which is given here if the particle coming from infinity with energy E1, then it comes close to the force field, which is this, which is at a distance R1 from the force field. And then this particle cannot overcome the potential barrier. This is the barrier. So the particle cannot cross this barrier to this side, but it comes here and then again it will move back. To infinity so the situation is like this we have the distance r is here r1 okay a particle coming from infinity okay this is the particle which is coming from infinity reach to this force field which is here and then it can scatter back to infinity So this is the path of the particle. This is an example of a charge. Suppose we have a positive charge and we have another positive charge which is coming from infinity. If this particle, if this positive charge reach here, then it cannot go beyond this positive charge, but it can go back to its original position because they repel each other. So this is the example of this one. Now suppose that we have another particle which is coming from infinity with energy E2 which is less than E1. Here E2 is less than E1. Now this particle which is energy E2 get closer to the force field and reach to R2, R4. This is the R4 distance from the particle of force field. And then again, the, the potential is higher than this E2 because the potential is here. The, 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 the magnitude of the potential is this much, while energy is this much. It cannot cross this potential. So again, it come closer to R4 and then again it is scattered back to infinity. So the, we have the same situation what we discussed for this E1 but in this case the distance is R4 which is here this is R4 which is bigger than this R1 so the particle coming from infinity reach to this force field at R4 and then again move back to infinity now if this particle cross this barrier, pot barrier, potential barrier, this is the potential barrier, we call it a potential barrier, potential barrier. Suppose this particle which is energy E2 cross this potential barrier, classically this is not possible, but quantum mechanically this is possible and we call it tunneling. In quantum mechanics this phenomena is called tunneling. Now we suppose that this particle cross this potential barrier and reach to this, this region. 
this is classically this is not possible because the energy is smaller than the potential barrier but suppose uh, we can say that the particle already exists in this region then what will happen now the particle move from this side reach to this distance r2 and then it scatter scatter back to this in this way and again it reach to r3 at r3 the potential barrier is bigger than the energy of the particle so it get scattered again towards r4 so it means that the particle move between two circles like ah uh, we can say that the particle move between two circle this is the the distance from this origin okay this is the origin and we have this is r2 and we have another big circle and this is r4 r3 sorry this is r3 so this is r3 and this is r2 so we have this situation so the particle move like this this is the path of the particle so particle come from r4 r2 r3 sorry reach to r2 and then get scattered back to r3 so the particle come from r3 get scatter goes back to r3 at r3 it gets scattered back and reach to r2 at r2 it gets scattered back to r3 and the particle is bound between these two circle now this is a bound orbit we have two kinds of orbit one is bound orbit and the other one is closed orbit now what is a bound orbit like a bound orbit is that kind of orbit where the maximum and minimum of the orbit is fixed like in this case the maximum is r3 and the minimum is r2 these are fixed the particle cannot go away from these two points like cannot go away from this maximum or minimum like the particle cannot go in this region or the particle cannot go beyond this region so the particle is bound between this r maximum and r minimum uh like the particle cannot go beyond the maximum distance which is this one uh cannot come closer then the maximum minimum distance or cannot come closer than the maximum distance so the particle only move in this region like this shaded region which is here so this is a bound orbit while close orbit is a kind of orbit in which the particle traces itself over and over again like here the particle move in one way and go back in another way and in close orbit the particle trace itself over and over again and again example of close orbit is ellipse suppose we have an ellipse which is two foci this one or this one so if i consider this foci is my force field then this will be the r minimum and this distance will be the r maximum the two points are r minimum and r maximum and the force center is at one of the foci either this foci or this foci so if the particle move in this path so it can repeat itself again and again in this path and this is an example of close orbit while this is an example of a bound orbit now at at these points like r2 r3 r4 or r1 at point 
आर वन आर टू आर थ्री आर फोर वी हैव द एनर्जी ऑफ द पार्टिकल इज इक्वल टू द इफेक्टिव पोटेंशियल बिकॉज हेयर द एनर्जी इज इक्वल टू द इफेक्टिव पोटेंशियल हेयर द एनर्जी इज इक्वल टू द इफेक्टिव पोटेंशियल हेयर द एनर्जी इज इक्वल टू द इफेक्टिव पोटेंशियल आर हेयर द एनर्जी इज इक्वल टू द इफेक्टिव पोटेंशियल and we already calculate the relation for the velocity of the particle the radial component of the velocity of the particle is equal to 2 or mu we have e minus v effective now at this point e is equal to e effective so at this point r dot is equal to 0 r the radial component of velocity is zero those point at which the radial component of velocity is zero are called turning point those points in the force field in which this radial component of velocity is zero are called turning point like here the radial velocity becomes zero 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 so r1 r2 r3 and r4 r turning point at this point the particle will go back from go back to that direction from which from from that direction the particle comes towards this point like if we look at this r1 particle comes from infinity to this r1 the velocity radial component of velocity becomes zero here and then it moves back again to the same direction from where it comes ah if we look at here this r2 and r3 they are also turning point because the particle go back to to the to the like the particle reach here from this way and go back in this way or uh, the particle reach here in this way and go back in this way so these are the turning point so this is all about the shape of the effective potential so this is very important for in uh, in the point of view of exam we have many many questions and uh, we can get many many question uh, i will bring many many question from this this graph during the exam examination uh, during the preparation of the paper uh, during the exam so in the next video we will discuss motion in in inverse square force field okay which is a different kind of force field thank you